And amen. Let's go to Hebrews 11.1. 1. We want to continue with this that we've been looking at, faith basics, faith basics. And uh, we made this statement on the, the first meeting uh, that there's three things I have to uh, remember about faith. Faith comes by hearing. And you'll remember we learned that it comes by hearing the word of God. And then we learn from Mark 11 that the faith we have is God's faith. And that Romans 12, 3 says God gave us that faith. So faith comes, and the kind of faith that comes is the God kind of faith. It's God's faith. Faith comes by hearing. Faith goes by saying. Your mouth is the release valve. Faith goes by saying. And then faith grows by use. Faith grows by use. My faith can grow exceedingly. My faith can grow abundantly. Uh, my faith can go, grow quickly. It can grow more slowly. Uh, hallelujah. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Uh, faith, that word meaning the conviction of the truth of anything or being convinced that something is true. So faith ultimately is conviction. It's a knowing, all right, that I have what I see or that it belongs to me. And it is the conviction. Uh, so faith is conviction and it is the substance that word substance is that substructure, the undergirding, all right? It's, that's, that's literally what it, it's rendered in, in the Greek, is a setting under. It's what sets under, all right? That's, that's why people say, well, you know, I'm stepping out in faith, stepping out on nothing. No, you're not. Faith is not nothing. Faith is substance. If you're stepping out on nothing, you're not in faith. You're, you're in strong mental ascent. Faith is the most stable thing that you'll ever, under, that you'll ever experience because it can't fail. People say, well, I knew somebody whose faith failed. No, you don't. You know, some, you know somebody that quit. You know somebody that wasn't talking, but you don't know anybody whose faith failed because God's faith can't fail. Mm, hallelujah. I mean, read, read through the Bible. Read through the four Gospels. Read through the epistles and show me one time they said his faith failed. Well, Jesus said he prayed for Peter. Yeah, what did he pray? That his faith didn't fail. Did it fail? He had a struggle, but he came back. His faith didn't fail. You, 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 you. See, if, if, if you go into a faith stand with a, a thought process that it could fail, now you're a man of two minds. And the Bible says a man of two minds can expect to receive nothing from God. Doesn't, doesn't that settle it? So what you say, what do you do? You let it stay said. I said it. I'm, I'm not going to take the time to go into all that. We, 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 we taught on that Sunday at length. You got to believe what you say. Yeah. To have what God said, I got to believe what I said. And so faith is that substructure. It's that setting under. It's the bridge. It's the foundation. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, things expected. Expected. We taught last night some on how Abraham against hope believed in hope against the natural picture that he's seen that he was seeing he believed in the hope the picture that God had given him when God came to Abraham and Abraham said uh, uh, he said walk before me and be perfect I'm your shield and your exceeding great reward Abraham said what could you possibly give me seeing I go childless and the Bible says that God said, and he said, and my heir is this Eleazar of Damascus. And God said, he won't be your heir. One that comes out of your own body will be your heir. You know what the next verse says? And Abraham believed God. Yeah. Praise God. 
Abraham believed God. So the picture he had before God made that promise was, I don't have an heir. My, this, this servant is going to be my heir. But God said, that's not how it's going to be. And Abraham believed God. See, when you say, I believe God, you're saying something. You're saying something. You're saying, I'm choosing to believe the one who cannot lie. I'm choosing to believe the one that if he said it, he will do it. If he promised it, he will make it good. He said he would move heaven and earth to make his word come to pass. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So there, but there has to be that expectation. There has to be that, that expectancy, that picture. Amen. And then he said, it is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence, the proof of things you can't see. That what, what is that? That conviction. That conviction, that when you know, that you know, that you know, that you know. Proof. That's proof. You just know. And see, you can't explain this to people that are in their head. Well, how do you know? It's a spiritual knowing. Faith is of the heart, not of the head. It's a spiritual knowing. Abraham got to the place, the Bible says in Hebrews 11, that Sarah got to the place that she put so much trust in what God said to her that her body changed and she received physical, natural strength, rejuvenation, renewal of her organs to the place that she could have a child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and, and right? And, and you know, for the first part of that, we talk about 25 years. For 25 years after the promise, nothing changed. But at some point, after they started calling right. Well, look at this tonight. After they started calling right, things started changing. The Bible says that it had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Right? What did Sarah laugh about? She's in the tent. And God says, I'm going to give you a son. And Sarah laughed. Remember what she said? Shall I have pleasure when my husband is old? Is that what she said? And, and he said, it, Abraham laughed and said, Can one that it ceased to be with after the man or woman, can she have a son? In other words, both of them knew. They, they knew where they were at. Ha, ha, ha. But it all started changing when he believed God. Yes. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. The, the picture changed. So faith is the substance, and notice what it's the substance of things. Things that are not seen, but yet they exist. Faith is not the substance of nothing. Faith is the substance of things. These things are in the dimension of faith. They are the things that be not. They're the things that be not. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 28, the Bible says that God uses the things that be not to bring to naught the things that are. So, so, so what you may be seeing that needs to change God's going to bring that from the faith dimension, the thing that you can't see, to change what you can see. Oh, hallelujah. That's why it's changing right now. Oh, glory. Let's go over to Matthew chapter 8. These are our foundation scriptures. There's something that you're being seated with. S-E-E-D-E-D, seated. You're being seated with some things. Amen. Hallelujah. 
I'm, I'm glad all those years ago that Charles Capps seated us with the spirit of faith. Amen. Amen. That, that original seed still bringing forth. Matthew 8. And uh, verse 6. The centurion came and said, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. See, Here's the importance of believing God. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. God is never unwilling or unable. He's just uninvited. There, there's never an unwillingness about Jesus. There's never an, an, an inability. But my words invite him into the circumstance. Right? Right? He said, he said, those that seek, find. Those that knock, those that ask, right? I, I got to ask. I got to answer. And so, notice, he said, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. Notice, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Now, there's no indication here that he had ever heard a word on faith. As much as it is, he explains it in the natural, because I'm a man under authority. I understand how words and authority work together. All right? And I say how I have soldiers under me, and I say to this, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. Now, notice that. I say, go, and he goes. I say come. I say. I say go. And he goes. I say come. And he comes. I say do this. And he does it. Right? He said, I understand how this works. And, and then if you go back before he said that, that's why he said you speak the word. And my servant will be healed. Because he understood authority. Faith and authority have to work together. If you're going to operate your authority, you got to operate it in faith. If you're going to operate faith, you've got to use your authority. Faith, in, in Mark 11, 22 through 24, that's as much a passage of Scripture on your authority as it is on your faith. When you say, I believe what I say, you're saying, I'm the one in authority. And I believe that I have the authority, and if I say it, it's going to happen. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, 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 let me say this. That's why I said last night, there, there are Christians you know and I know, believers, Bible believers, they wouldn't say anything. Ne now, now, let me say it this way. I don't want to say they wouldn't say anything negative. They believe that all they're going to get is the positive things they say. Right? And, and, and don't get mad at me. So, and they have a confession list. And you should have one. But understand why I'm saying this. And they confess that every day. I'm the healed of the Lord. I'm out of debt. My needs are met. But then right on the other side of that, Right? I don't understand why this sickness is hanging on. I thought you were healed. Yes, sir. What did you, you didn't believe what you said. And if it doesn't happen, God will get the blame. And the fact was, they didn't believe what they said. God can't do for you what you won't believe. 
And, and if you won't believe what you say, God can't override your unbelief in what you say. But because if, if he overrode it, if he overrode it, then he would have to do that for everybody. And nobody would have to use faith. But the scripture makes it plain, without faith, it is impossible to please him. What does that mean? Everything that God has for us, it's a pleasure for him to give it to us. My little children, it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And I tap into that pleasure in the dimension of faith. Amen. So this man said, I understand how authority works. You, you got to understand, you're going to have whatever you say. You're going to have whatever you call. What you call, it's what it is. I, I'm a big one to find out what names mean. Because I want to know what I'm calling. When I call my wife Michelle, you know what I'm calling her? Who is like God. That's what it means. Michelle is the female derivative of Michael, who is like God. When I call my daughter Liliana, it means beautiful. When I call my little dog Trixie, you know what Trixie means? Bringer of joy. That's what it means, bringer of joy. And I talk about her that way. Come here, you little bringer of joy. Oh, but that's a dog. No, I want a dog that brings me joy. Don't want to complain about the dog. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't, isn't that great? What, what am I calling? What am, I, what, am I, what am I calling that circumstance? Because what I call it is how it will respond. Now, this is an ultra negative example. But when somebody says, ah, dear God, we're just broke. They're using their authority to break themselves. They're using their authority to stop finances from coming into their life. And they'll come up and have prayer. They'll have people agree with them. My agreement with you will not overcome what you're calling the circumstance. I'm agreeing with you. If Jamie came up to me and said, Pastor, I want you to agree with me for a raise. And we know they get raises, right? We've already seen that. But then he goes out and he says, yeah, I, I, I need a raise, but you know, they're not going to give me a raise. They're not going to give me a raise. You know, the company I work for, they're not going to give me a raise. We agreed for a raise. He's not getting a raise. Because he called it a bad company. I can't deny it. <laughs> Y'all don't remember that song, do you? <laughs> Just thought I'd throw that in there. Bad, bad company. <laughs> anyway, glory to God. Does that make sense? How am I calling it? The Lord showed me a revelation through this one time. In, in, in the Spanish language, when you ask someone what their name is, in English, we go, what is your name? In Spanish, it's this. How are you called? How are you called? Now, why is that? How, if I need to call you, what do I say? Right? I can't call you without saying. If I need to call you, what do I say? What do I call you? Amen. What, what, what should you call yourself? What should you say to yourself? This man said, if I tell them to go, they go. If I tell them to come, they come. I tell them to do this, they do it. You just speak the word and my servant will be healed. And Jesus said he hadn't found great faith like that in Israel. Settle it tonight. When you tell it to go, it goes. Yeah. Yeah. When you tell it to come, it comes. Right? You're debt free. Why? Because money is to you. 
Now. When? Now. When? Now. Money got up on its feet Sunday night and started running to you. Yes. It's looking for you right now. Yes. Is that right? Say that out loud. Money, Money. is looking for me right now. That's why you call, you call, you call yourself blessed. Yes. Why do you call yourself blessed? Because it's looking for you. Yes, Money's not looking for poor mouth people. Yeah. Money's not looking for people that don't believe in all that. Well, I just believe he's going a little bit too far. That's okay, stay broke. Stay broke. Stay living paycheck to paycheck. Stay living with neck bones on the stove. You ever eat a pot of neck bones? Anybody ever ate neck bones? There's no, there's no meat on neck bones. You're just sucking bones. Isn't that right? You, you got to eat 20 of them to get any nutrition. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But Pastor, that's got an edge on it. I'm, I'm trying to seed you with something. You're calling yourself blessed because the blessing is trying to find a place to land. I, I'm already blessed. There are people that know that revelation. They know they're redeemed from the curse. They know they're redeemed so that the blessing could come on them. And they're not walking in the blessing. And the reason they're not walking in the blessing is they call themselves other than blessed. Hallelujah. You, you want to leave live a deplorable, defeated Christian life? Just go around calling yourself a sinner saved by grace. That's what you're calling yourself. You're calling yourself a sinner. Yeah, but I, I'm saying I am a sinner saved by grace. I'm not a sinner. I haven't been a sinner for 40 something years. When I gave my, it doesn't mean I haven't sinned, haven't made mistakes, got away from God, but here's what it means. I gave my life to God. God doesn't break covenant. God doesn't change his mind. When you go into covenant with God, God says that's how it is. I'm going to move heaven and earth if that's what it takes to make sure you get what I promised you. You got to keep your mouth in line with what God said. Hallelujah. Do you see that? You, you got you to go around expecting that blessing to find you. Every day. I'll hear people say this. They'll, they'll, go to get, they'll go to look at another car, a new car, and they'll say, oh, I hate going to car dealerships. Oh, I hate it. Oh, I hate it. Oh, you know, it's just the back and forth. And no back and forth. It's going to be simple and easy. Right? Yes. Yes. How are you calling it? How are you called? See, how are you called? I used to tell people, when you call poor boy, I don't answer. Because that's not me. When you call sick, I'm not saying, huh? I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm not sick. I'm healed. Is that right? We, we, have, we, have, a, we, have, a, we have a good friend that we uh, frequent their business a lot. And uh, one day they were, they were saying some things about getting older and uh, uh, talking about how they, they, were, they were getting older. And, and they're of, a, of another denomination, but they're a good, good, good acquaintance of ours, a good friend. And Pastor Michelle was sitting there with me, and uh, the, the, he, said, he said, well, you know, I'm, I'm getting older. And he named his age. He goes, really getting old. And Pastor Michelle goes, your youth is renewed like the eagle. And he said, excuse me? <laughs> and she said it again. And he goes, thank you, Michelle. I don't know if he understood what she said. And we, we were eating lunch afterwards. And my, my wife said, Lord, I hope I wasn't too forceful. No, when, when, when you're used to calling, yes. right? Yes. Hallelujah. Look at Isaiah 46. Let's look at something concerning the way God does things. 
Isaiah 46. See, I, 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 I don't feel like I can move away from this too, too, too long. Pe- people will come and say, why didn't God do what I saw in the Word? And they're looking for a reason. Right? They're, they're looking for a reason. Well, there might be a reason... And, and it may be you. But you never start off with, why didn't God do? Uh, settle that. God always does what he says. He can't lie. Isn't that what Titus says? Titus chapter 1, verse 2, God who in hope of eternal life has promised, and God can't lie. Is that right? Look at, look at Isaiah 46, verse 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there's none else. I am God and there's none like me. Notice what he says. Declaring the end from the beginning. So what does God do? He shows up and starts declaring the end of a thing from the beginning. The New Testament says he calls things that be not as though they were. So God is showing us, he shows up talking and declaring, my job, stay with what he declared. I mean, say this out loud, what God has said about me is what I will say about me. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. So God declares, he speaks the end of a thing from the beginning. God calls those things that be not as though they were. Now, now God can do that, obviously, because we know Ephesians 2.10, we read it last night. He said he's already planned beforehand. He's already prepared and made ready and keeps waiting those good things that were planned for us. In that faith dimension. So God looks at what he's already planned and prepared and starts calling you according to what he's already made ready. God starts calling you blessed when you don't have anything. God starts calling you healed when you are sick in your body. God starts calling you at peace and at rest when there's turmoil in your life. Why? That's his plan. That's his that's what he has planned for you. Amen. Amen. See, it's not just a confession. It's your saying What God has declared. Glory to God. Amen. Look look over here in the book of Ruth. I I want to show you something. The enemy tries to shake the circumstance to get you to change what you're saying. Now, Ruth had a husband named Elimelech, and they had left Israel. There was a a, a famine. They went to another land, and while they were there, Elimelech died, and and then her sons died, and, and, you know, she was coming back to Israel. And notice something. Verse 19 says, So they too, Naomi and Ruth, they went until they came to Bethlehem, now, Beth, it's interesting, they, they needed sustenance, and Bethlehem is a word that means house of bread. So they're going back to where they can get what they need. And it came to pass when they were coming to Bethlehem, all the city was moved, and they said, is this Naomi? Hmm. Now, notice. And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi. Now, why is that important? The word, the name Naomi means delight. 
or pleasant. And notice what she said. Don't call me delight. Don't call me pleasant. Notice. But uh, call me Mara. Now, you've heard that word before, Mara. That's where the children of Israel strove with God in the book of Numbers, at the waters of Mara, because the waters were what? Bitter. And she said, notice, don't call, get this, don't call me delight. Don't call me pleasant. Call me bitter. Call me Mara. What had changed? The only thing that had changed was her circumstance. Her circumstance changed and her view of her changed. Is that right? You're blessed. You're healed. You're overcoming. You have the victory regardless of the circumstance. And that can be an oversimplification. That can be elementary. But I've, I've done this so long, I'm telling you, where I see people start questioning is when the pressure's on. Don't start calling yourself what God didn't call you. Is that right? Jeremiah, he, God called him, said, I've called you, I've ordained you, I've set you as a prophet to build up, to tear down, right? And what Jeremiah say? Oh, Lord, I'm, I'm a child. I'm just a child. And what God say? Don't call yourself a child. Don't say that. I've ordained you a prophet. Amen. In, in the book of Genesis... When, when the people of, of the time were building the Tower of Babel, they were building it. They were, they were, they, they, they were they, according to Scripture, they were going to try to build it up to heaven. And I've heard people downplay that, but God said they could. He said, I got to go confuse their language. Because as long as they can agree... Nothing will be impossible to them. Is that what he said? So he confused their languages. They, they couldn't call one another. They couldn't talk to one another. Hallelujah. Your circumstance cannot be allowed to change what you call yourself. Oh, hallelujah. And, and you know, when you look at that, if Naomi had not had a daughter-in-law that got over into faith, Naomi would have died. And Naomi would have died bitter because that's what she called herself. Amen. Now again, it's elementary, but every time somebody goes, how you doing? Well, I'm sick. You just, you just called yourself sick. Well, you know, Pastor, I, I, I want to tell the truth. Well, now, wait a minute. What are, what are we gauging truth by? What I feel or by what was said? I'm not talking denial. Somebody goes, do you have a fever? You're a liar if you have one. You say, no, I don't have one. You lied. You just lied. Um, I might have a fever, but I'm not sick. I'm the healed of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Say it out loud right now. Say, I'm taking healing. I'm taking healing. Say this, I've took so much healing. I've took so much healing. I'm healed, I'm healed. And, I healed. and I stay healed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Romans 4, 17. You still tracking with me? Yes, sir. Praise God. Now notice, remember God declares the end of a thing from the beginning. 
Matter of fact, say that out loud in your mouth right now. Say, what God has said about me, I agree with. I am what God says I am. In the name of Jesus. Now that settles it. I said, that settles it. I am what God said. <sighs> Hallelujah. Romans 4 and verse 17. Let me read this to you from the Roost Bible. Even as it stands written, a father of many nations, I have established you permanently. I've established you permanently. Before him whom he believed, before God who makes alive those who are dead and calls the things that are not in existence as being in existence. Now, God's not faking. They already exist in the dimension of faith. You may not see them in the natural, but they exist. We, we run into a problem when we think God has to create what He's promised us. We run into a problem when we think God has to create what He's promised. Right? If I told you, I'm going to reach in my pocket and give you a $100 bill. Do I have to create it or do I have it? I have it. Right? Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Can we look at that in the Amplified Bible? I want, I want you to see this. Uh, we are God's own handiwork, His workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined. Now look, here's this word, planned beforehand. So everybody say out loud, God has a plan for me. God has a plan for me. Say it one more time. Tell your neighbor, God has a plan for me. Now close your eyes and say it. Put your hand on your heart and say it. God has a plan for me. Mm. And notice he planned it beforehand. For, for who? Us, right? Taking paths that, notice, he prepared ahead of time. So hold that right there for me, please. So he prepared the path that I'm supposed to be on ahead of time. So he's not making it up. That we should walk in them living the good life the good life that he prearranged and made ready for us to live. You know, you know the only thing that frustrate that, that used to frustrate me was how long it took me to get into that prearranged good life. It was already there. I could have walked into it at any time. And God didn't need to recreate. God didn't need to create it. It's already created. Amen. 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 Ready for us to live. Notice. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, right there. Living the good life that He prearranged and made ready. He doesn't have to create anything. I just got to get on the path. The path. The, the plan is what produces. Everything that you need is in the plan. Yes, Amen. In the dimension of faith. You get a hold of this, you'll never be concerned another day in your life. Amen. Ever. Amen. Ever. When, when I go to the Lord uh, about anything, there may be something that comes up. I'll say, Father, now none of this caught you off guard. And I thank you that you've already prearranged and made ready for everything that we need, everything this ministry needs. I just receive it right now out of the plan. Because the enemy fights your mind to get you thinking wrong. And if he gets you thinking wrong, he'll get you talking wrong. And once he gets you talking wrong, he turns your own authority against you. You see in the book of Genesis how he deflected Eve's authority? At any time, Eve could have said, no, we're not doing that. 
You're lying. She had the same authority Adam had. But he deflected her authority. He got her thinking wrong. And once he got her thinking wrong, thinking about the fruit, thinking about how good it looked, thinking about how it looked good, she started talking wrong. Amen. Say this out loud. Say, Father, Father I thank you, I thank you that, anything I that anything I deal with has not caught you off guard. Has not caught you off guard. I receive the answer, receive the answer and the provision. Out of the plan plan. in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that that's why you call. You 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 call as if it's already done. Hallelujah. Glory Glory to God. Because he doesn't have to create it. It's already there. Hallelujah. You know, I hear people say, well, right now they're working on my mansion. Well, no. It's already done. Do do you realize what the Bible says? It says God has rested from his works. God only has to be believed. You just have to believe what he's already done. See, because if, if, you don't, if you don't keep that mind, are you saved? You believe you're saved? Yes. Is it finished? Yes. Salvation's a finished work. Is your name in the Lamb's book of life? Yes. Yes. Right? Now, you know you've never seen that book, but it's there. Yes. But you've seen it in the Word. Here, here's the point. If salvation is complete, eternal salvation is complete, everything to live out your salvation is done. Yes. It's finished. It's a finished work. Hallelujah. So what you have need of already exists. It's just in that dimension of faith. And when I call it, think about this. If, if a person's in another room, and you need them in this room, you don't sit there and think, wish they'd come in here. Boy, it'd be nice. <laughs> right? I don't, maybe you do that. I don't know. More than likely, you call them. Yes, sir. Sweetheart. I need you to come in this room. I need you to come here. Right? And isn't it interesting? They come. Now, I know that you might think this is oversimplified. Why did they come? Because what? You called them. Don't overlook that centurion's understanding. He got a revelation that if natural people will go when I tell them to go and come when I tell them to come, all Jesus has to do is speak the word and it'll be done. If your dog will come to you when you call it, your debt freedom will come to you when you call it. Everything in this planet is designed to come to you when you call it. Hallelujah. 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 You need to tell your job. Job, you're going to give forth a raise. You're going to give forth a bonus. Amen. Amen. Am I helping you? So he's not creating anything. You know, Brother Hagin used to say this. He would say, in, uh, in, uh, the 1950s, Brother Hagen had went out, well, he pastored his last church in 1949, went out on the, the field, field ministry full-time, and, and by his own words, went broke, right? Remember he said he, he, back then, he had that car with well over 100,000 miles on it, and you know, back then, if you had a car with 100,000 miles on it, it was a piece of junk. 
He said, matter of fact, he said, I came home and I sold it for junk. And he said, I only had enough money. I had three small notes and I only had enough money to pay the interest on each of those notes. And he said, the kids needed school clothes and everything and I, I didn't have enough. And he said, remember, he said, I went to the Lord and I took him to Isaiah 119. Now this is Kenneth Irwin Hagen. And he said, I went to the Lord with the Bible. Kenneth Hagen said, this isn't working. I'm willing and I'm obedient and I'm not eating the good of the land. Well, he said, I'm willing and I'm not eating the good of the land. Or I'm obedient and I'm not eating the good of the land. And God said, that's your problem. You did what I asked you, but you didn't do it willingly. Now, a lot of times people leave that story there, but here's what happened. Jesus began to talk to him and said, I'm going to tell you how to fix your finances. Remember? He said, here's what you got to do. He said, don't pray about money anymore. He said, decide on the amount you need. Right? And he said, when you have the amount you need, then you loose the ministering spirits and say this, ministering spirits, go and get the amount of money that I need and bring it to me. And then he said, and bind Satan and his forces and tell them to take their hands off your money. Now, the, the reason I'm saying this, then he would go on and say, all the money you need is in the earth. He would say, God's not sending any money from heaven. Because if he did, he would be a counterfeiter. Now, if God already prearranged it and planned it and made it ready, and he knows you're going to need finances for it, where are the finances at? They're in the earth right now. Why are they in the earth right now? They're in the place that you have the spectrum of authority over, and you have a God-given right to call what's ever in the earth to you if you need it. Yes, Amen. Amen. That's why you talk to money the way you talk to your dog. You talk to doubt and lack and insufficiency and debt the way you talk to your dog. If, if lack is trying to rule you in your life, just like you would tell the dog to get out of the chair, you tell debt and lack to get out of your life. Amen. Pastor Michelle and I say this all the time. We live in a paid-for flow. We live in a paid-for flow. Amen. Amen. Say it out loud. I live in a paid-for flow. And what, what does that mean? Everything I got is paid for. Yeah. Amen. Now, see, that's important. But people will pray about their finances. And they will, now watch, they will use their words that carry their authority to tell God how they don't have what they need. Oh, Lord, we're struggling. Lord, you know this bill's coming up and I don't have the money. I thought, I thought he said he had prepared and planned and made ready and keeps waiting. Charles Capps said one time, he said when he was first getting a hold of this, he said uh, he was praying. And he was telling the Lord how bad things were. And he said the Lord interrupted him and said, uh, what are you doing? And you know, Brother, Brother Charles, he said, Kind of hurt my feelings. He said, I told him I'm praying. And he said, the Lord said, no, you're not. You're complaining. And then he said, and while you're at it, I'd appreciate it if you'd quit telling me what the devil's saying. If you say what God says, you empower what God said to come to pass in your life. If you say what the devil said, you empower what the devil said to come to pass in your life. Well, he's been telling me I'm broke. Why would you repeat it? 
Now you're a partner to a lie. Right? It, you, know, you know why the enemy fights you in, in the physical realm, in your health, and in your finances? You know why the enemy fights you there? Because you can see that. If, if you pull out your wallet and nothing comes out but a moth, you can see that. If you pulled out your, your money clip, your wallet, your purse, whatever it is, and there isn't a, a, a thin dime in it, you don't agree with it. You don't agree with what you don't see. Don't ever agree with lack. Amen. You agree with what God said. With what's already planned. Yes. Yes. And, that, and that's why the Lord revealed that to Brother Hagin. You, 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 you don't pray about it. You loose the ministering spirits. You claim it. You loose the ministering spirits to go get it. And you bind the enemy and stop him from trying to hinder it. Amen. Hallelujah. I got to hurry. You, you can write this down. In Genesis 17, when God came, he said, your name will not be called anymore. I, I like that. Your name will not be called Abram. In other words, no one will call you Abram anymore. That word Abram, exalted father. But notice, your name will be Abraham. That, that word, hmm. When, when you look in, 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 in the Greek, the Strong's, the lexicon, it says, father of a multitude, probably meaning to be populous. So notice, you know, exalted father is not a bad name, but it doesn't describe what God saw. A name is for the purpose of calling. Whatever we name a thing is how we're going to call it. Now, let me finish with this. i got about one minute, two minutes. I won't get preachy. I said this the other night. In 24 years of full-time ministry, full-time pastoring, I have never called my church small, and I never will. Because I believe what God said. Ever. Small churches don't do big things. Only big churches. And I know big churches that do less than we do because they talk about themselves like they're small churches. Small churches talk about how they don't have. Small church mindset. And they operate with no quality and excellence. They, they just act like mom and pa are in charge. When you start demanding something out of yourself, it's evidence you're going somewhere. If, if you just like life the way it is, and you won't ever put any demand on yourself then that means you're just content to stay where you're at. Right? But when you start talking to yourself and putting that demand on yourself, amen, then you're saying, I'm, I'm changing. Things are changing. Yeah. You know, there was one time I, I knew a, a, a young lady. She was believing God. Her children had been taken away from her, and she was believing God to get her children back. And you know, a lot of people would laugh, and I think about it today, and I still get goosebumps. She, she had a certain number of children, uh, uh, three or four children, and uh, uh, every night before she'd go to bed, she would go and make three beds. Her babies are coming home. And she'd tell them, good night, love y'all, good night. Amen. You know, that didn't happen quickly. But she's got relationship with all those kids today. She, amen. amen. 
It, 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 wasn't too, it wasn't too long ago. She, she has her grandkids on a regular basis. When people said, you'll never see your children again, she made beds and called. You need to go home, make some beds, and call some things. Amen. 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 Things don't change by wanting them to change. They change by calling them differently. Hallelujah. 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 So I, I said that about the church to say, when, when I talk about, I, I'll, I'll run into pastors, and you'll ask them, how are things going? And they'll make statements like this. Well, pastoring would be good if it wasn't for the people. And they'll, they'll make statements like that. People are a headache. Oh, people and their problems. I, I finally got to where I'll look at them, and I'll say, you ought to thank God that God thought enough of you to give you people with problems. This church, Acts chapter 20, uh, uh, 22, says that you are the, ch the flock of God that he bought with his own blood, and the Holy Ghost made me the overseer. I don't have the right to say something ugly about God's flock. And pastors have the problems and have the issues they have because behind closed doors, they talk ugly about their church. And then they want to get up and preach and want those people that they've just talked ugly about and called rebellious and called stubborn and called hard-headed to receive. And they're using their own authority to kill their sheep. Hallelujah. That's free. So, you hear me? That, that, that's important. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, you know, statistics say most pastors are on the verge of burnout. Well, they talk it all the time. Amen. i I feel younger now than when I started pastoring 24 years ago. It energizes me to pastor. Why? Because, because, because your life is changing. Amen. I look around here, and there are people, you've been healed by the power of God. Your marriage is together today because of the power of God. Your life is changed because of the power of God. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm saying this for somebody's benefit, and I covenant with you. I promise you, and I don't lie. I won't lie to you about you or for you. My wife and I, when we talk about you, we talk about how much we love you. We talk about how wonderful you are. We talk about how strong you are. If somebody has a problem and we need to pray about it, we go to them like this. Father, you have given them into our care, and Lord, show us how we can help them. Amen. Amen. You, you, you got to know that. Those empowering words are spoken over you. You're going to do everything God wants you to do. You're going to do everything you've been called to do. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Let's stand up tonight. The Lord said a lot tonight. I encourage you to go back and listen to these. Oh, hallelujah. Tomorrow night, the first lady <laughs> will be speaking. Amen. The one and only. Amen. What's that? And Friday, but not Saturday. That was almost. Hallelujah. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I did. I, I used my words incorrectly. She called me that night and she goes, uh, we're not having church Saturday. I said, okay. And it was like, it, was, it wasn't like, what do you think? It was like, we're not having church Saturday. Okay. That's authority. That's right. Hallelujah. 
Glory. Isn't God good? Amen. This has been so great. And we're going to have two more good nights. Amen. Amen. Uh, with, with the Lord. Praise God. Come on, say it with me tonight, would you? The vision of our church will always be to build people's faith and frame their world by the word of God. You and I will always be world changers. God bless you. Thank you for joining us for this message. We would love to hear from you. If you have a prayer request or want to share how this message has helped you, send us an email at main at buildfaith.net. This message and many more materials are available to you free of charge, can be found at buildfaith.net or at any of our location media stores. As always, keep the switch of faith turned on and build your faith and frame your world by the Word of God.